Right, just a spot of lacquer. Yeah, this is cheap nail varnish. Not your wife's fancy stuff. She won't help. She won't thank you if you're starting to use that. Cheap nail varnish from the the, the bargain basement shop. And that's all that's required. I just want to lock that cord on there. I'm just revolving that drum round till that's sitting around that side there where that drum's not touching anything in case that lacquer runs down. I don't think it can do, I think I'm fine. But while it's drying I would much rather I was in a spot where I can clean it up easily than somewhere where it could get underneath the wheel and cause me grief. Alright, so that little task is done. What else did I do? While you, while you weren't watching, I swapped out that screw there, the longer screw. I found a shorter screw to go in there so that it won't conflict with the shaft when I put the shaft back in there. And the body at that stage, that's mostly done for the moment. Um, there's a few tricks need to be done before we put the front back on. But uh, to be honest, they're probably best done at the last minute. So I'm going to pop that aside and start work on the shutter assembly. Now I'm pretty sure I determined that the problem here was mostly the external control gear on the shutter, not the shutter itself causing our problems. And that certainly appears to be the case. I was just testing that using a shaft taken from one of these cameras that I was using as a tool to cock it. Right, you start taking some of this apart. I'll remove that return spring for the uh, shutter release. That screw's fairly tight, and the one at the top. Sometimes it's hard to get those two screws out because if someone's been over enthusiastic with glue on the outside, it can run down here and the like and cause problems. Okay, we'll get this unhooked if we can. That's it. Now, what do we want here? Let's take this off. Now I can see a little bit of rust here and here. I don't think it's serious, but I will be wanting to uh, polish that off before I put things back together. Take those off. I'll reclaim that buffer. This is the little buffer pad, is the pad that the mirror comes up against. In this case, it's leather. Some cameras it'll be felt, um, and some cameras just have two little felt patches there. Let's take this off. Yeah, certainly corrosion under there, and that will be affecting the way this action moves. Take that little rack off. This screw is usually very tight. That was no exception to the rule. Let's see if this arm will lift off. When you go to unhook this arm in particular, watch it because the little plastic insulated button on the end of it is only staked in and it's easily broken away. So when you're unhooking it from here, you may have to slacken off this screw to loosen that bracket to allow you to get that out easily. That one came out without a fight, but they don't always. The clearance is quite small. Uh, the differences for this bracket are enough to cause grief. I'm just looking to see if that button is firm on there. 
it revolves. So I'll put a spot of glue on the back of that to make sure it doesn't uh, come adrift. Right, more. What have we got? We've got a little pinion gear here and a bush that it runs around. That little drive gear. That's where the shutter gets cocked. Under here, there's a little gear there with a washer on the front of it. This is the piece that opens the blades into the viewing position. And there's also another little spacer washer under there. I've got to be careful not to lose those. There are four screws hold this together. Hold the shutter assembly onto the front panel here. Two down in these holes. I've got those out. Let's take those away. Now our flash sink wire is soldered here. I've got to unsolder that, so I'll go and do that. Be back shortly. All right, well that wire is unsoldered, so I'll just straighten that flash contact up, give it a wriggle, and that'll come out. So there's our shutter assembly. And here's the front of the camera. All this I want to clean. I want to get rid of these traces of adhesive that are still stuck on the front here loosely. And clean up this old grease and rubbish in the back. And make sure all these surfaces are quite clean in here. That flash contact, there's an insulating washer that goes over there. Which is typically glued in place with a bit of black paint of nothing else. There it is. So I'll just put that carefully to one side. That's got to go back. But this all looks to be in good order. Um, shouldn't require much in the way of cleaning. Let's have a look at the shutter. Alright, so I'll start dismantling this. Just get out my all-purpose block of wood. I've just put the curtains across because that sun is blowing out. The That's better. Okay. So three screws here at the front, hold that the front rings in place. Now on this camera, the control rings were all very stiff. That's not uncommon. And there's all manner of reasons why that might be the case. But very commonly it's just because of dust and dirt and dried grease in the front control rings. Those problems can be dealt with while the shutter is still on the camera. But you need to know what you're doing. Because getting them back in place is awkward. Getting them back in place in the correct position is more awkward certainly possible and it's exactly what we do when we're assembling the camera but if you're not aware of that it'll go back in the wrong position and then what happens if you put it back in the wrong position as you turn the wheel on the base of the shutter to adjust the meter you'll find that that mechanism will won't reach the end of its travel before the cord reaches the end of its travel and you end up breaking the cord and that would be one of the prime causes of broken meter coupling cords in the retina reflex models is people having been in there played with the position of the front rings put them back in the incorrect position and then shifted all their controls and broke the cord the cords themselves are fairly robust Right, what have we got here? We've got three screws that hold our shutter body to the 
mount here at the front that is quite tight I'll just reclaim those before they fall away and the shutter will lift off so in our focus mount here at the front two pieces to be careful not to lose one is that little pinion and the second is the ball that's the ball that gives us our detents for our shutter speeds that mask fits in here loosely over a pin put that to one side we don't want to make a mess of that you see most of that in the front of the camera and these parts will all need to be cleaned with naphtha and I'm just stacking these parts in a heap but you'd be laying them out very carefully in order so that you know where everything goes but here's our basic shutter and we can start taking this apart so the retaining ring need to unhook that, stretch it out and unhook it, here's our shutter speed settings cam plate, there's the little pinion that cocks the shutter, this little latch here holds the, cam the shutter in the cocked position, this is the internal rack Here's our main spring and I'm having a look at the state of that because it looks fairly relaxed to me, it is, it's as tired as anything. That's a very poor example, um, I'll have to find a better example than that. Basically the spring gets into a very relaxed position like that because the camera has spent too long sitting in the cocked position. Of course when the camera is 60 years old, you know it's quite feasible that it had spent decades at a time in the cocked position and the springs the springs just take a set and it's just the nature of springs when they're stressed to the maximum they, they'll take a set all right what do you want to get into next oh we'll roll that round to the stop we'll take the retard gear train off there two screws same base basically it's the same retard gear train as is used in um, shutters like those seen in the retina 3Cs and the like the self timer or delay action held in with a single screw all this looks quite clean in here which suggests to me the camera had never done much work so it had never been out and about and been given the opportunity to get all dirty and dusty and sandy as cameras tend to. Right, this stuff, I'll cock that, lift that spring out so it's not under tension, two screws here, Yeah, while I wasn't watching when those springs tried to get away, did it? It did. Here it is. Here's the up, one of the screws. There's the other one. Moving flash contact can come out. You can release that. That little component can come out. The shutter release arm can come out. Now I need my pliers to get that spring off. All right, normally I put a screwdriver behind here to stop that arm from moving. Pick up the spring, lift it out of its the hole it hooks into, and by making sure the arm can't move at that stage, it means I don't have to stretch the spring out a long way in order to disconnect it. Here's the little pallet wheel. 
we remove this screw here holding that bracket in place and the lens tube so I can lift off the main cam this screw I need a special screwdriver to get that out it's a, a post a little slot either side to engage a tool here's the screwdriver I'll use to do that job it was just a small cheap screwdriver that I cut a slot in the end with with a dremel it allows me to get to that screw it's much easier than trying to fight with a pair of tweezers I can tell you and a screwdriver like that of course you can buy for a couple of dollars and you can modify very quickly indeed All right, so our B lever I'll get that off its post and there's a couple of springs. I'll zoom you in a bit. Alright. This one in particular, I always put a toothpick over the centre so it can't get away. And then lift it up and unhook it. Once the tension's relieved there, I can pick that up with my tweezers. These tweezers aren't very good and they're doing their best to let it get away. There's that spring. Now I want to lose it. And this spring here can come off. That runs around a little groove in that post. Watch those springs, they're very small, they're very keen to get away. Okay, at the front of the shutter we're done. At the rear of the shutter there are three screws here, hold this bracket in place. The bracket has the little lock lever on it that you have to depress to um, change the setting of the flash sync speed lever or self timer and this self timer flash sync speed lever can come off now that unhooks you have to wriggle a little bit to get it past the flash contact but um, nothing too dramatic at the back of the case we've got three screws now unusually the paint is somewhat scratched around those screws which means that someone may have been very clumsy and been using a screwdriver with a blade that was too wide and so that the blade has scraped the back of the case around those screw heads certainly got that look to me right the case should lift off with only a little bit of a nudge you're going to come off for me thinking about it here we go so there's our case now the case there's nothing in here this is just a, a plate three small screws hold that plate to that case if it's oily you're probably best to remove that plate so that you can make sure you get all the oil that might be behind it if there's no oil in here you don't need to but check that those screws are tight I have seen cases where one of those screws has backed out and fouled the shutter blades and caused the shutter to fail to operate. Okay, so there's our case. This will need to be cleaned carefully with naphtha. Here's the mechanism plate with the shutter blades on it. Now there are six shutter blades, five positions, six blades. And that's because we have a cover blade in this position which goes over the position of the first blade so that was blade six this is probably all going to fall in before we get this disassembled blade five blade four blade three 
Blade 2 is unusual as well. You'll see it's got a big steep cut out here and that's so that when it's in the open position it doesn't foul the shaft that comes through there. That's Blade 2. And here's Blade 1. We've got six blades, four of them are identical. The identical blades go in positions 1, 3, 4 and 5. And the large blade with the steep cutout is number 2. And the short, the narrow capping blade is number 6. Goes over the position of the first blade. Our mechanism plates largely stripped down now. I'm going to remove the last remaining two screws from the lens tube. One of them we've already removed because it was holding the bracket for the main cam, or for the spring for the main cam. These screws are unusually tight. Just hit a uh, file size limit there, so unfortunately you just missed that last bit while I was taking out those last two screws from the lens tube. And here is the blade actuating ring and our mechanism plate stripped down completely. Nothing more to come off that. That spring can stay loose on there. That's the detent spring. And all of this needs to be cleaned with naphtha and um, get ready to reassemble things. Well, the cleaning of shutter blades. These ones are in a fine state. They're great. They're really not, no dirt on these to speak of, no visible oil, no corrosion. So all they're going to need is to be swabbed with some naphtha. And that'll be sufficient. Had there been a lot of marks or mild surface corrosion, um, they would probably need to be polished with some metal polish first. And I just use Brasso, which is a, uh, as the name suggests, is intended for polishing brass in copper. It's more aggressive than something that was intended for polishing silver. However, these blades don't need any of that attention. They just need to be cleaned with naphtha. And they... There's virtually nothing coming off those because the cotton bud here, the Q-tip, is not becoming discoloured. Be careful not to damage the blades. Shutter blades are typically easy to clean on a good flat surface, but you need to take some care. The shutter case here just needs to be cleaned with naphtha. Now there are no diaphragm blades in the shutter because they're all contained in the lens. Generally there's not much needed to be done here. If there'd been any oil visible in the shutter, I might remove this plate, which is held into the case with three screws, to make sure there was no oil trapped behind it waiting to wriggle its way out. I'm just going to check these three screws to make sure they're still tight. That one wasn't. There's a mark on this case, which you can probably see if I hold this to the light correctly. There you go. There's a mark right here. That's a fingerprint. That's where somebody has handled that plate between their bare fingers and their perspiration and skin oils have etched their fingerprint into that plate over time. That's what happens if you pick stuff up with your bare hands. Some surfaces are, are more prone to corrosion than others. If 
I can detect some roughness on there um, as I run over that with the Q-tip that I can feel a little bit of roughness there but I don't think it's sufficient to cause any problem if it was really bad you'd notice it straight away of course the shutter blades have to swing open and closed over that surface so it should be smooth just checking the rest of the case making sure it's clean I'll clean the outside of the case all of this is, is coming up pretty clean so it's not going to be hard to clean this up for re reassembly. Here's our case. Here's our lens tube. This has uh, got a matte black finish on the inside. Just need to make sure it's clean. And I run around the outside surfaces here at the back. This is where the blade actuating ring runs around the lens tube and making sure that there's no old dried grease or dust or grit in there around the front we only have the uh, the curved rack piece that goes inside there and the shutter speed settings cam plate revolving around here those all look very good blade actuating ring This is nice and shiny, doesn't show any wear, and it's not overly greasy. So let's clean all these surfaces. That's fine. The mechanism plate itself. This face faces our shutter blades. That needs to be absolutely free from oil or contaminants. This side is, is the outer side. This is where the control gear for the shutter runs. This is all very clean. I can just you can just see a fingerprint on the top of that pallet there. That pallet controls the flash sync speed. Flash bulbs take a measurable time to reach peak intensity, so in order to deal with that, when you're using bulb flash, the shutter actually ignited the flash bulb before the shutter blades opened to allow it to reach peak intensity by the time the shutter blades reached a fully open position. Electronic flash was essentially instant so that wasn't required. Okay that all looks good.